Hello and welcome to Community Church of Douglas. This is the introduction to doing Easter service at home. Now we have a service guide online at www.ccofdouglas.org. You can download it there or also if you're watching on YouTube it'll be in a link below or if you're on Facebook we'll also include a link for this worship guide. You can bring it up on your screen or you can download it and print it out, which is the best way if you can, uh, and then follow the worship guide for your Easter morning worship. It includes links to music, both traditional and contemporary, that will go along with this worship guide, uh, which is a great part of Easter worship. Even if you're at home alone, uh, to be able to sing out loud on this most joyous of Sundays. So make sure you get your worship guide and follow it for Easter worship with Community Church of Douglas. We look forward to celebrating with you uh, and to being with you as soon as we can in person. God bless. Welcome to Community Church of Douglas and our Resurrection Sunday worship celebration. If you haven't already, would you download your worship guide at www.ccofdouglas.org and follow along our order of worship this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. This is the morning of the third day. Friends, are you ready for this? Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. I pray that the Holy Spirit would be with you now and with all of us as we continue to worship. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we bless you and we thank you that Jesus uh, was faithful to your call and has defeated through your powerful love, sin, the enemy, and death and now is raised again on the morning of the third day. In his victory we rejoice, and for his sacrifice and faithfulness we give you thanks this morning, Father. Wherever we are, in our homes and joined with Christians all around the world, would you fill us with the power and the joy of the resurrection so that in our hearts we might experience the good news again because of Jesus and in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, the tomb is empty and the stone has been rolled away. So together we proclaim, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. For three days he lay in the cold and lonely cave. But God's love cannot be contained by anything, not even death. Thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus, our risen Lord. He is risen, he has risen indeed. Let's pray this Easter prayer this morning. Alleluia and praise to you, O God. Our hopes and our dreams and the deepest longing of our hearts have come true. We do not have fear of death, for Christ goes before us. You have raised Jesus from the dead and given us new life. The despair of death has given way to the promise of hope. Change our lives, change our hearts, to be messengers of Easter joy and love. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, now and forever. Amen. Now, if you'd like to continue on through your worship guide, you can select one of the songs there. And I encourage you to sing out as loud as you can this morning and share the joy of Easter. Fill your hearts, your minds, and your homes with music.
Would you join me now in prayer again as we turn to God's word, the very words of life to us this morning, as we hear the good news and the story of the morning of the third day. Pray with me. This morning, particularly in a world that's filled with anxiety, anxiety but longing for hope, we thank you for this story, these words of life that come to us from your word. Holy Spirit, now would you turn our hearts and our minds toward the amazing events that changed the fabric of all creation and have changed our lives too. Would you make the power of the resurrection come to bear on our lives this morning, that we might be changed, that we might experience again the good news of Jesus' resurrection and be so compelled by it that we share that good news with others. Since we cannot do that on our own, Holy Spirit, would you do that in us because of Jesus and for him who gave his life for us. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Our message this morning comes to you in a slightly different way. We're going to read through uh, John chapter 20. You're going to hear a dramatic reading and follow the words uh, on your screen, or if you're just listening, you'll be able to hear it. And then we're going to do that in three sections. So we'll hear John 20 in three sections, and after each of the three sections, I'll give a brief meditation, a brief message on each one of the three sections. I want to invite you to think about resurrection morning, the morning of the third day, in a new way. It's likely that you're experiencing when we all are experiencing this Easter, this resurrection morning, in a very different way than most of us ever have. It might be discouraging to you to not be at a church building or celebrating around the table with your family or having Easter brunch or doing something that you would normally do. But I want you to think about this. The very first resurrection morning was celebrated when the disciples were scattered, not all in one place. They were hiding for fear. Some of them had left town. None of them knew what was happening, but they heard the good news of Jesus in their own homes, just as we are again today. So hear the good news about Jesus' resurrection with new ears and new hearts. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now, as we think about John chapter 20, verses 1 through 10, we're listening to it with different ears than we would have even just a few weeks ago. All of us are in some way almost experts in virology, how viruses work. Life and living things have a pattern, even viruses. And it's no coincidence that we think about Jesus and what happened in the resurrection 
as new life. It starts somewhere, a virus does, and it spreads one by one. Everything has to have contact somewhere in order for a virus to spread. Actually, healthy things do uh, replicate that way too. And there's nothing more powerful, more life-giving than the good news that Jesus has been risen from the dead. He did not die. Jesus came alive again just as he said he would be, just as he said he would. That experience of new life is real. And it's not just a story. It can be experienced and it's cellular. Now, Mary, in her incredible faithfulness, was the first to hear and experience and then spread the good news about Jesus. Then came Peter and John racing after her to experience it for themselves and then take it back home. What if we use these turn of events, the challenges that we're currently experiencing of the coronavirus, as a turnaround moment? It's something to reorient our lives and our attention and our understanding, even our experience of the gospel this morning. What if we use it to teach us how to experience and share the good news again? The good news about Jesus, new life always starts in and with Jesus. He did the work. It happened and his resurrection continues to ring throughout eternity. We, like Mary Magdalene and like Peter and John, we have to experience it for ourselves. And then, just as the disciples did, they ran back and they told others. How will you approach Jesus new on the morning, this morning of the third day? Will you not just listen online, not just remember not just do something special, but will you go to Christ and hear and experience the power of his resurrection again to be changed by him? Let's listen as the story continues. Weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. She did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. That was... John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. It's one of the most beautiful moments in all of history, and definitely for me, one of the most beautiful moments in all of Scripture. Mary is the first person at daybreak. As soon as the Sabbath restrictions were lifted, she runs out, not knowing what she's going to find, to encounter Jesus, even to find him and minister to his body, which she thinks she will find in his grave. What motivated her? Was it grief? Probably. Was it faithfulness? Yes. Was it love? Definitely. But why is she different? 
Why is Mary Magdalene different than all the other disciples? Because she experienced the life-altering, loving power of Jesus herself. Now, this is Mary who had been delivered of seven demons. She had demonic possession. Evil lived in her. It was her experience inside and out every day of her life for however long she was oppressed by the enemy. Then Jesus delivered her of that demonic oppression and she was completely changed. About another woman named Mary, Jesus said this in the Gospel of Luke. So I'm telling you, Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, that her sins, as many as they are, have been forgiven and that's why she has shown me such great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Friends, this morning, if you allow Jesus to see your brokenness and you invite him to heal you, not just to go to church, not just to do religious things, then you will have the kind of relationship that Mary has with Jesus. The kind of relationships that sees you running to find him first, no matter your circumstances. And it is that motivation that means you will hear Jesus say your name first. You too will hear him pronounce your name on your own morning of the third day. The good news isn't just for religious people, especially the good news on Easter, on resurrection morning, is for those of us, the broken, those who are oppressed, oppressed by evil stuff, public sinners, and those who are rarely found in a church setting on Easter morning, to you particularly belongs the good news of the third day. It's not just for religious people. In fact, it is experienced most powerfully by those who are estranged from Jesus, who are weighed down by the power of the world and sin and death. Today, maybe this moment now, is also the morning of your own third day. Will you invite Jesus to heal you so that you can hear him say your name and you can respond, teacher. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. We've all just heard the third part of the story from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. In this third act of the story, the good news finally comes at last, but not least to the disciples that evening. No doubt they are gathered behind locked doors, hearing rumors, maybe from Mary and the women who went to the tomb, maybe from John and Peter, but word had spread and they had gathered in one place, but they were gathered behind locked doors. Friends, this first resurrection day is much like today. There were no big religious gatherings, no family feasts, there was no brunch, no spring clothes, no Easter hats, nothing special. The good news of Jesus was experienced in fear, in their own homes, locked behind doors, scattered. They didn't know what to think, they didn't know what to do, and they did not know what was coming next. In my lifetime, at least, there has been no better time to hear this account of the resurrection than when we are in quarantine. It's the way the resurrection news was first experienced by the disciples, 
And even after the first time, it continued that way for several hundred years in the history of the church. The church was always gathered in fear, fear for their lives, fear of persecution scattered throughout homes. The celebrations and the alleluias were done in secret in their hearts much more than it was publicly and outwardly. The gospel, the good news, was born and thrives in hardship. That's what makes the good news about Jesus as Savior so powerful. Friends, the biggest grace is that not all of us are like John and Peter. Not all of us are like Mary. Even if our hearts and our minds are filled with anxiety or doubt or fear, Jesus comes to where we are, even if it's locked behind doors. And he comes and he stands in front of us and he says, peace be with you. I want you to hear those, new, those words of good news from Jesus again this morning. Friends, after he's risen from the dead, he's defeated every evil power and reunited us again with God. Hear these words, peace be with you. If you doubt that it's Jesus speaking to you this morning, just ask and he will demonstrate it to you just as he showed the disciples his hands and his side. Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, will make himself known to you. I hope that you will invite him behind the locked doors of your home, behind the locked doors of our hearts and our minds so that we can receive the good news and the peace that comes with it, knowing that Jesus has conquered finally sin and death. I can't think of a better time when we need to experience, hear, and share that good news with others. Friends, if you're at home today, uh, because of the quarantine with frustration, confusion, or anxiety. How will today be your third day as you hear the good news of Jesus' resurrection? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's pray. Lord, we confess that we do not understand fully the power, the scope, the majesty, the everlasting impact that your resurrection has on all living things, on all creation, and for all time. But in our own part of the world, in our own homes even, even in the very chair that we're sitting in, would you bring the power of your resurrection and the peace that comes with it into our hearts and our minds? Would you change us no matter where we are? If we're the ones that run first to the tomb and we are so excited and eager, focused on you, Jesus, this Easter morning, whether we ourselves are broken and struggling and we need to hear you say our name again, or whether we are gathered trying behind closed doors, trying to make sense of the world, would you come through the power of the Spirit and help us experience the good news of Jesus' resurrection again? Not just think about it, not just rehearse it, but experience it again. Allow it to change us and then go out into the world proclaiming the good news about Jesus, that we have seen and experienced him on our own third day. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Friends, I want to give you this blessing. May Jesus, the King who has conquered every evil thing, who has defeated the power of sin and death in our lives and forever, be with you. Would he give you peace? And would he send you out as messengers of the good news into the world that's dying to hear about your third day experience? Go in peace. <music>